So we had one of these on our last lesson, um, and I started, and I was like, hey, you know what? Maybe we will do another one of these bad boys, all right? So if you'd like to try this, um, I'm just going to pause the video to save time, and then the work will appear, and you can check what you got, all right? All right, if you've got x over y is equal to 11 over 34, you are absolutely awesome and correct. Um, if not, then you're going to need to study a little more, you know what I'm saying? Woo -woo. But you may or may not or will see one of these at some point in time in your given future, maybe at a family dinner. I don't know. So let's hop, hop to it here. we got 8.2 similarity. All right, so we're going to be able to apply some fancy similarity type stuff here. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be rad and cool. All right, so there are two things that must be true if polygons are to be similar. That uh, little question mark here, let's cross it out. That should be the similarity sign, just like a tilde, all right? Um, my old college professor used to call it squiggle. All right, so the corresponding angles are congruent, and the corresponding sides are proportional. So imagine, uh, I think the, the easiest way to think about similar polygons or similar figures in general is like taking a picture and enlarging it, okay? Everybody still looks the same. You didn't stretch them horizontally or vertically. It's just a bigger picture. Uh, everybody looks, you know, like normal in it. They didn't get all distorted by stretching one side too much, okay? So that's what you can think about when you're talking about similar figures, okay? The angles are the same. The angles are congruent. The corresponding sides are proportional. Um, so similar or figures that are similar are what, but not necessarily the same what? Hmm, we got to fill in some blanks. So they are the same, uh, same shape, but not necessarily the same size. So same shape, but not necessarily the same size. They could be bigger or smaller versions. So these two triangles that we see are similar to each other. Let's write a similarity statement. I've got triangle A, B, C is similar to triangle. Well, what matches up? I see that angle A and angle X both have one tick mark. Boom, X. I see B has two, Y has two. And then I see that C has three and Z has three. So I've got X, Y, Z. You can also see that the sides are proportional. 3 over 6 is the same as 4 over 8, which is the same as 5 over 10. So you can set up a super proportion to figure out missing sides or to show that they are indeed proportional to each other. So we got dilation and reduction. If you've ever been to the eye doctor, you had your eyes dilated. What happened to your pupils? They got bigger. Reduction, smaller. Okay? So dilation is getting bigger, reduction is getting smaller, or they could be, you know, congruent. Similar figures can be congruent, okay? Congruent, they're similar, similar, not necessarily congruent. All right, are these triangles a dilation, reduction, or are they congruent? Well, if I'm talking about from ABC, from ABC to XYZ, it's getting smaller, it's a reduction, If I'm talking about it from XYZ to ABC, that is a dilation. Okay, so it depends on which way you're going with, with it. All right? Wonderful. So I have a follow-up question here. We'll bring up a, a vocab word that's going to come up. Scale factor. So what would my scale factor be? Well, in the case of the reduction, if I'm talking about from ABC to XYZ, I could take any one of my corresponding sides if I know these figures are indeed similar. I'm going from 6 down to 3, which means that it's a 2 to 1. And we would keep that 1 there, okay? So it's a 2 to 1. ABC is 2. XYZ is the 1. It's a 2 to 1 reduction, okay? The dilation when we're getting bigger, so in the red, um, we're going from, I'll take any one of the two sides. I could do it with uh, 4 and 8 if we want, right? Because 4 and 8, those are corresponding sides. I'd be from 4 to 8, so it is a 1 to 2. It is a dilation, right? It's going from 1 up to 2. You'll often see scale factors on like maps, blueprints, things like that. Like one inch equals 500 miles on a map. It's, you know, one inch to 500 miles, right? You're getting bigger. That's a dilation. Okay.
So once again, we got a little typo here. This is a similarity, right? That's what's supposed to show up the tilde. So given that triangle JHK is similar to triangle POM, and that order that it's written in is very important, angle H is equal to 90, angle J is equal to 40, um, measure of angle M is X plus 5, measure of angle O is 1 half Y, find the values of X and Y. Okay, so let's start just by labeling some things. We've got the 90 for H. And if H and O are corresponding angles, then the, the O has to be 90, and it's conveniently labeled as such. J is 40. So what's, what's angle P going to be? Well, P is corresponding to that, so it's also going to be 40. And I know that, uh, well, there's 180 degrees in a triangle, so what's left over for these guys? 50 and 50. Maybe we can use it to set up some equations. Well, if the measure of angle O is uh, 1 half Y, and I know that O is 90, I've got 90 equals 1 half Y. If I divide by 1 half, it's like multiplying by 2 on each side, so Y is equal to 180. Okay, well that's for Y. How about for X? Well, X is measure of angle M is X plus 5. Hmm. Well, I've got the measure of angle M is 50, so if I set 50 equal to X plus 5 and I subtract 5, I get X equals 45. Yeah. Awesome. Well, there we go. I used my similarity statement to set some stuff up. I labeled my values that I knew. I figured it out from the sum of the interior angles of a triangle is 180 degrees to get some of those missing angles, and away we went, America. All right, so I've got triangle bat is similar to triangle dot. All right, sorry, the question mark came up instead of the tilde or squiggle. Um, we got OT is 15, why don't I label that? I've got BT is 12, and I've got TD is 9, and I want to find AO, which is just this little guy right here, we'll call that X. All right, I've got similar triangles. I want to set up some kind of a proportion, and uh, this could help out with some of you uh, organizing your lives a little bit, especially when diagrams are a little bit turned around, right? These are not in the same orientation. What you could do is you could say, all right, well, I know that BA matches up with DO. I know that AT matches up with OT. And I know that uh, BT matches up with DT. All right. And I can fill in what I need and what I have uh, accordingly. So let's see here. I've got BT, right, which is 12. I've got DT, which is 9. I've got um, OT, which is 15. Uh, but I don't have AT, do I? Hmm. But I do have that AO is X and OT is 15. So I could go with this option of saying X plus 15 and then solve. My other option is to say something like AT is equal to Y. And just put a Y up there, cross, multiply, and solve. Get AT and subtract 15 in the end. Either way, you'll get the same answer. It is up to you. Um, I prefer the method that I have down currently, so that way when I'm done solving, X is my final solution. Okay? All right, so let's go ahead and figure this bad boy out. Um, I could reduce... The 12 over 9, if I'd like to get it to be a little bit smaller, right? Smaller numbers, a little more manageable. Um, so 12 over 9 gets simplified to 4 over 3. If I divide both those by 3, that makes it a little bit easier. All right, so 3 times x plus 15 is 3x plus 45. And 4 times 15 is 60. Now I don't really need a calculator. Uh, otherwise, you know, the 12 and the 15, ugh, 9 and 15, ugh. all right. So I get 3x is equal to 15. When I subtract that 45, divide by 3, and I get 5 for x. Again, uh, if you would have solved with it this way, you would have gotten y is equal to 20, uh, and then you'd have to subtract the 15 to get 5 for your final answer. Okay, so either way is fine. Up to you. A um, couple different ways to think about it. All right, so we've got uh, A, B, C, D is similar. Thank you, wonderful PowerPoint 
importing into this program, similar to EFGH, so those two polygons. Now, I've got measures labeled accordingly. I want to find FG, GH, and EH. Okay. Um, I also want to find the scale factor from A, B, C, D to E, F, G, H. And then I got to deal with some ratio of the perimeters of A, B, C, D to E, F, G, H. All right. All right. Got a lot going on here. This is exciting stuff. All right. Um, now, I could set up that super proportion like I had before with the three guys. I could do it with four guys here. That's totally fine. Um, and we could do a lot of cross multiplication or... Um, we could start with figuring out what our scale factors. I know that they are similar, right? Because I'm told they're similar. Um, and I know FE. Well, what's FE going to match up with? FE matches up with AB, right? So I've got FE, I've got AB, so it's 6 to 9. So I'm going from 6 to 9, which is a 2 to 3 scale factor. So from A, B, C, D to E, F, G, H, it's 2 to 3. So I've already answered that one right there. I'm going from 2 up to 3, right? Now, if I want to find out all my other sides, um, I'm going to use that scale factor to figure everything else out. So let's see here. Um, if I want F, G, well, what does F, G match up with? F, G matches up with B, C based on my similarity statement. F, G, and B, C match up with each other, right? So B, C, I know, is 4. So if I did 4 over I'm not sure is equal to 2 over 3, my scale factor, I can cross multiply. 4 times 3 is 12, is equal to 2x, so x equals 6. And that would be my F, G. Does that make sense that BC is smaller than FG, FG is bigger, right? We're going from small to big, so those numbers make sense. If it was a smaller number, you'd be like, wait, what? What the heck? What's going on here? So you got to make sure that those numbers make sense before you make a little mistake. Some people make mistakes with the scale factor. All right, uh, let's see here. How about GH? Uh, well, GH matches up with CD. And CD is 3, so 3 over X is equal to 2 thirds, my scale factor. All right, so I get 9 when I cross multiply equals 2X, so X equals 4.5. Maybe I shouldn't use the same variable, but eh, whatever. All right, so we get 4.5 for my GH. Then we can do the same thing for this last one for EH. Uh, let's see here, EH is going to match up with AD. I know that AD is 7, so I'm going to have 7 over X. Why don't I use a different color? Let's see what we got here. Let's see what we got here. How about, ooh, you're going to like this one. How about 7 over, oh, isn't that wonderful? 7 over X is equal to 3 halves. Using that same, I'm sorry, not three halves, two thirds. My goodness. I was so mesmerized by the beautiful colors. All right, so you get 21 equals 2x. So x is going to equal 11.5, excuse me, 10.5. Here we go. Got all my answers. Wonderful. That is fantastic stuff. And I've already got my scale factor. Now I want to find the ratio of the perimeter. Well, how do I find perimeter? If I found perimeter, I just have to add up all my sides, right? So for the A, B, C, D, 6 plus 4 is 10, 7 plus 3 is 10, so 20 for my perimeter over here. So I got 20 for my perimeter. How about for F, G, or sorry, E, F, G, H? If I add up all those sides, hmm, I have a feeling it's going to be 30. Well, I've got 9 plus 6 is 15, 4.5 plus 10.5 is 15, that is indeed 30. How did Mr. Allen have a feeling that it was going to be 30 other than he's done this problem seven years in a row now? Well, I'll tell you how. I looked at my scale factor and I said, well, if all the sides go from a 2 to a 3, right, a 2 to 3 ratio, wouldn't it make sense that when you add them all up, it's still going to be in that 2 to 3 ratio? Heck, yeah, it does. Whew, awesome. America, freedom, 
rock and roll. So when I find that ratio of the perimeter, 20 over 30 reduces 2 to 3. It's the same as the scale factor. Mm-hmm. So formally, let's write that bad boy down. The ratio of the perimeters of any two similar polygons equals the ratio of any pair of corresponding sides. Woo! Awesome. Now, I want to just go one further. What about area? Two question marks. How about three? What about area? What if I, let's just say something simple. Let's just say I, I double my side lengths. What's going to happen to my area? Is my area going to double? Um, well, let's, let's think about something simple. Let's just say I have a rectangular room, if this thing would draw a rectangle properly. There we go. Okay, so I've got a rectangular room. And then let's say I'm going to double my area, or my lengths, excuse me. So I double and I double, right? Uh, so how many new rectangles am I going to get in here? Oh, my goodness. Rather than, let's just say that this was... 20 square feet, right? Well, now I got another 20, another 20, another 20. This thing is, is four times as big. Holy cow. And what if I were to, what if I were to triple it? How many do I have now? Hot diggity dang. Now there's nine of them. I've tripled my dimensions and it's nine times as big, not three times as big. What the heck is going on here? Well, with area, it's not quite as simple. But what do you know about your units when we're talking about area? The units are squared, right? Boom, right there, the whole squared. So if I'm doubling, I'm really going up by a factor of four. When I'm tripling, what's three squared? Nine, I'm going up by a factor of nine. We'll talk more about area later on, but that was a voice crack indeed. Um, I'm going to leave it in there, though. And we're going to talk about area more formally later on, but there's a little start. That is wonderful. All right, our last problem of this lovely video. The ratio of the perimeters of A, B, C, and D, E, F is 2 to 3. And we know that if the ratios uh, are 2 to 3, our sides are also in that same ratio, right? Um, we just discussed that. So is that a dilation or a reduction? In this case... Since we're going from 2 to 3, we're going from small to big, it is a dilation. If AB is 12, what is DE? Well, we can figure that out. If I want to figure out DE, which corresponds to AB, uh, let's see here. I've got 2 over 3, which is triangle ABC to triangle DEF. Then I can throw AB, which is 12, over DE, which we'll call X, cross multiply and solve. So I get 2x is equal to 36, so x equals 18. Excellent. Wonderful. There we go. Bibbidi bob That's our answer for DE. It says that the perimeter of ABC, triangle ABC, um, is 65. What is the perimeter of triangle DEF? All right. Um, it is important to note that we're, we were talking about these triangles being similar, ABC, similar to triangle DEF. Sorry for not having that in the directions there. Um, all right, so, hmm, well, I know that the ratio of the perimeters is 2 to 3, and I know that ABC is 65, so I'll pop that up there with the, the 2, because that, that corresponds to the ABC, right? And then I don't know what uh, DEF is. I'll use Y in this case. We're using a different variable. Uh, we've got 2Y is equal to 3 times 65, and then I'm going to have to divide that bad boy by 2. So 195, divide that by 2. And what do we get? 97.5. Woo! Good stuff. All right. Lovely. Scale factors are all powerful in similar figures, children. That's right. H-dubs. Get her done. Get some practice. You know you love it.